the chess king of New Orleans wasn't Paul Morphy. And this might surprise some of you because as you know, Paul Morphy lived in New Orleans and he was very good at chess. But I can put you at ease, the title of chess king of New Orleans was held by a Morphy. Just not by Paul, but by Ernest Morphy, Paul Morphy's uncle. He was also very good at chess and apparently even one of the best analysts in the whole country. Ernest was a big admirer of his nephew, so much even that he sent games of Paul Morphy to publishers and even tried to arrange matches with other great chess players back when Paul Morphy did not have the reputation he later had. So he really was there from the beginning, believing in his nephew when he was at a very young age. I found a casual game the two of them played in 1856. And just to put this into perspective, this is still 24 years before the invention of the light bulb. Isn't it crazy that we have chess games from back then? Kind of makes me wonder what is the oldest chess game we have record of? Do you want to see a video about that? We have Paul playing with white and Ernest playing with black. They start with e4, e5, very classical for that time. Paul Morphy's not going for f4, the king's gambit, which he played quite a lot at that time. He plays knight to f3, and after Ernest also develops the knight, we have an Italian game. And here it already gets interesting. We have b4, the Evans gambit. The best move here is to take. And this is interesting because the Evans gambit was known back then, and even to this day, it's not refuted. So this still gets played occasionally on the top level. Uh, black takes it, which is the best move, and we have c3. The bishop has to move out of the way, and d4. And here we already kind of see the point. We have a big center with white and a lot of activity. Now, black takes, and we have castles. Here, you could take with the pawn. The problem just is, that after something like queen to b3, I win the pawn back already, and I have a lot of activity and you don't have the center. The computer recommends just develop this knight and castle. Now, here black already played an inaccuracy, because he took with the bishop. And I said before, the problem is, after I take, and you take back and I go here, for example, uh, oh, which actually also Morphe played, but now, Black has like nothing. Yes, black is up three pawns, so maybe black does not have nothing, nothing. But look at these bishops. Those are monsters. I have the center. My queen is quite active and I can activate it even more. This pawn is very weak and the only developed piece black has is the knight. So positionally, this looks terrible, which is also why the computer evaluates it as equal. We have pawn to d6 kind of uh, taking the sting out of the bishop, but the bishop will return, like, trust me. Uh, and the queen is coming out, and this is already not looking that comfortable. So, we play knight to h6, protecting this pawn. All of the other moves just aren't looking too good. You could maybe move the queen, which isn't bad, but like something like the bishop, I just take, take, and ooh, this is not looking nice. So, this move isn't too bad, but white takes this pawn with another threat. And here, for the love of God, just castle. I get this whenever I watch Morphy's games, which by the way is also an argument that people make when they say that Paul Morphy wasn't as good as we think he is today because his opponents were just terrible. That they almost never castle. And of course you can have very aggressive games and sacrifice everything if your opponents don't castle. Here, just, just castle. It's so easy, just castle, everything is fine. But no, his uncle Ernest tries to trade off the queens, which yes, I get it, you're playing Morphe, you wanna get rid of the queens very fast, get into an end game, maybe you will win there because you won't win a middle game against Paul Morphe. But still, like, just get your king to safety because we see the problem here. Of course, Paul does not trade queens, he plays e5, sacrificing a pawn and opening up the board even more. Now, no matter what you take with, you can take with the queen, because I take with the knight, you lose your queen, obviously. Uh, if you take with the knight, I will probably still take with the knight. And if you take with the pawn, now this bishop is coming back. Yeah, it's the return of the bishop. <laughs> and I mean, ooh, it's not looking good, especially playing Morphe. So uh, we have the rook coming to e1, and that's exactly what happens. If you can't castle, then I will just get all my pieces into the game and line them up with the king and at one point I will checkmate you. Now, of course, Ernest was a good chess player, so he did not go into this without any plan at all. He develops the bishop, 
and after the rook comes to b1, he castles. Notice how Morphy anticipates the plans of his opponent and adjusts this accordingly. Most of you would probably play rook to d1, thinking, well, open file, this is good. But rook to b1, anticipating your opponent trying to get your king to safety and already being ready for an attack there, that's just brilliant. Especially because this also comes with a, with a tempo. So, very good move by Paul Morphy. And after castles, Morphy's ready. He already sacrifices his bishop. Now, this is a very interesting sacrifice. Because you have to take the sacrifice, but also you kind of can't. <laughs> I, I will show it to you. So, if you, if you don't take the sacrifice, which happens, you're in a lot of trouble. Like, you can't just waste a move, because that's just checkmate in four. You can pause the video and see if you find it. I think it's actually possible to find it. It's a very beautiful mate. Uh, it takes. The king is attacked. It has to move out of the way. And after I take your knight, the king has to move here, sacrificing the rook, move there, check, no matter where the king goes. Well, it actually only has one move. You go here, and that's checkmate. So, you can't just do anything, but the problem is also, you can't really take it. Now, if you take, the move is probably queen to b2, straight up threatening maiden 1. Now, every bishop move prevents the maiden 1, but only one of them prevents the whole checkmating sequence. For example, if you move bishop to f5, which seems very natural and uh, also coincidentally attacks the rook, I play this check anyways. You move out of the way and then I play rook to c1. And it's really not easy to do anything here. Like, if you just waste the move, I take the knight. Yes, you can take back with the queen and this is protected, but as I already marked in, the rook is coming to d1, giving a check uh, forcing the king to move away from the queen and you win a queen and there's also some checkmate in sequence here because like when your pieces are that active wait isn't that checkmate no it's not checkmate yet. but when your pieces are that active there usually is a checkmate um so there you lose your queen the only move that actually works with the bishop is bishop to f4 because if i check you now you move away and i play rook to c1 you take the knight and protect here. And if I take you, this still doesn't work because I play knights to f5 and I still have time to uh, go after you go here, take it and the check block with the knight. That wasn't the correct sentence in English. And the check block with the knight. <laughs> and I block the check with the knight. That's how it should, it should sound. Okay, so... This is the only move that works. But even if you find bishop to g4, this is still not winning for black. Because I check you anyways. The king has to move out of the way. And now I take with the knight. And if you take back, which is the, which is the only move that doesn't lose for black, I play check, you move away, check, you move away, and I have a perpetual. You can't go here, because then there's some crazy mating sequence, but just showing you check, and I mean, uh, it's already over. You have to take with the queen or intercept with the queen. You will lose it. And this is just way, way, way better for white. So a brilliant sacrificing attempt by Morphe, which does not get taken by Ernest. Because if you start calculating this and all the variations and you find only one single, single move that maybe draws if you play perfectly, you usually don't take the sacrifice. If you see like, oh, if I do that, that's made. Oh, if you do that, that's checkmate. Yeah, ma maybe I shouldn't take it. The problem is, <laughs> this perpetual draw is the best black can get out of, out of the position. Every other move loses. Black gets pretty creative with the defense. He plays the knight to a5. And while this protects here, and it's actually a pretty interesting move, I will just show it to you, it's a huge blunder. White's position now is so good that the computer announces mate in 15. And, I mean, let's be honest, Morphe did not see checkmate in 15. Even though, to be fair, he kind of plays 
all of the perfect moves after that. So may maybe he did see the mate? He didn't see. He didn't see checkmate in 415. Maybe, maybe he saw it. He plays perfectly after that. Maybe he didn't. Maybe. But tell me in the comments. Do, do you think he saw the mate in 15? I. He, he, did, he didn't see Maiden 15. Fuck. Most super GMs don't see Maiden 15. He did not see Maiden 15. Let me know in the comments what you think. I, he, no. Now, you can take the knight. Very interesting. Because I take the bishop, this is protected, and remember, black is still up three pawns. So if you can take this thing out of white's attack, black is just simply better. Morphe, of course, saw this and first played the rook to c1. Perfect top engine move. Uh, straight up threatening Maiden 1. Black defends it, and now you take the knight because you can't take with the queen anymore. But black takes with the pawn, and now it's not made in 15 anymore, it's made in 10 because black didn't defend perfectly. And uh, Morphe just keeps playing all of the moves. You, of course, you take with check, the king has to run, and you take the bishop. Now, yes, you could take this, but remember the tactic from before. This is the exact same thing. I play the rook to d1, I chase away the, away the king, and you win the queen. So you don't take it, but you move away the queen. And Morphe sacrifices his rook. Now, you can take this. If you take it, you can pause the video and see if you find the maiden 1. I hope this was enough time, because it's maiden 1. Uh, this is just over. I check you, you can take. And if you're wondering why the king can't escape here, be careful, the return of the bishop. So, you can take it, the king moves out of the way, Morphe plays the queen there, black blocks it, and again, every move by Morphe is just top engine, this is the fastest way to mate. A lot of other moves are also checkmate, but aren't the fastest way to mate. Morphe finds the simple, best, fastest way to do this. Uh, and here, after the queen moves in between, Morphe's like, well, you didn't take my rook sack before, but let me try that again. <laughs> and again, you can't take this, because I check, and that's checkmate. You can't even run and let me mate it like this, because it's already over. Uh, so you can't take that. You also can't take the queen for defense, which black actually did, because now it's a mate in three. Do you spot the mate in three that Morphe played here? It's such a pretty mate. You don't take back the queen, which would still be winning. But again, Morphe's not about, oh, I just take back material. No, I want to play the top engine move that the engine will say in 150 years to surprise some internet geeks. Yes, this was his objective. Um, no, you check with the rook. The king has to move out of the way because the rook is protected. And now you take this rook. The queen has to move in between, there's no other legal move, and now there are two different mates in one. Morphe decides for rook, this rook takes, which aesthetically looks pretty nice, but I would actually say this would be way cooler. Double discover, check and checkmate. If you want to see more incredible games like this, leave a like and a sub.